not usually this quiet before I start. Uh, welcome, good morning, welcome to the mo- Living Room Morning Service. Uh, we are the Living Room Church and it's great to have you here, um, especially if you are visiting. We're a church based in Wallyford. We seek to glorify God in all that we do. We love our Sunday mornings, the time that we can all be together to worship our risen Lord Jesus. And um, We're going to be continuing our journey in the book of Acts uh, this morning, um, and yeah, Andrew's going to be speaking um, a bit later. So, who was who was here last week? Quick show of hands. Who was here last week? I'm sure everyone. Good. I'm sure everyone that was here last week would agree that we just had a, an, an amazing worship service. Um, I hope you don't just come on a Sunday and then you do your hour here or however long it is, and you forget about it. We've got home groups in the, in, the, in the week to kind of reflect on what we learn on a Sunday. Um, but last week we were in the book of Ephesians and we considered the greatness of God and specifically um, his grace and how glorious it is. We learned out that we are not deserving of the grace that God shows us, that God gave up everything for us. His grace is infinite and unchanging. And we followed that up with communion. We were able to f- reflect further on what Jesus' death meant for us. So I'm just going to read some verses which kind of reflect on some of those themes. It's from Ephesians chapter 2, 4 to 9. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us us with him, in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. (coughs) And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We're now going to sing a classic song on that theme of the amazingness of grace. I think you can probably guess what it is. And we're going to sing Amazing Grace, which is a slightly newer version as well. It's got the extra chorus. So it's Amazing Grace, My Chains Fell Off.
short prayer and then sing again. Lord God, we thank you for the grace that you've shown us. We really are not worthy, but you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for us. For those this morning who trust and believe in you, we know that we were once lost, we were once blind, we were now found and we can now see. Help us to understand and appreciate your grace more. Help us to rely on you, for you to be our solid rock. Amen. We're now going to sing My Soul Will Wait. Foundation. 
nation, my soul will wait, my soul will wait for you. I'm going to invite Carol to come up. You're here. Do you want to come up? <laughs> I have a couple of very exciting announcements to make for you this morning. We in Ignite, the primary school aged group, have been traveling around the world over the last few weeks. We've been thinking about some of the missionaries that we support. Um, as well as the Apostle Paul in the Bible. We've been eating foreign food. We've tried crickets, we've tried tortillas, we've tried poppadams, we've tried spicy food. And we have been, we've been really excited as we've been raising money for some of our missionaries. We've got this, let me show you my prop. We've got this really special money box and there's a lot of money in it, but it doesn't look like it. What we're going to do today is we're baking cakes today. And we are going to keep them until next week. They're not going to be ready for you by the end of service. You're going to have to come back next week. We're going to freeze them so that they will be fresh for next week. And then for donations to our missionaries into our very special money jar, you can take part two. So that is the first announcement. Come with your coins next week. Lots of them, okay? Because we want to fill this up and then we want to be able to give that all of it to the missionaries that we support here at the living room. Second announcement, you're wondering what that is, aren't you? You are. Well, it's not a hat. It is a big light bulb. Well, it will look more like one when it's painted. This is a piñata, and it's to remind us that next Monday evening, between 5 and 7 at Musselburgh Baptist Church, we are going to be having a light party for anyone up to the end of primary school. It's for families, okay? So come and enjoy it with your kids. This will be full of sweets, which we are going to bash out of that light bulb. There are activities and games. There's a short talk about how Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness, and we can be lights that shine in a dark world too. So there are details on our Facebook page about how you can sign up for that. It is a sign-up event because we're preparing food, we're preparing activities, we're doing it together with Musselboro Baptist, so there will be people from there, and there will be people from here, and you can invite friends to come too, and it's going to be lots of fun. So look at our Facebook page, look at the Musselboro Baptist Facebook page, come and speak to me afterwards if you want to know how you can sign up. It's free, but there will be a donations jar on the evening if you want to help to contribute towards costs. So don't forget and get signed up. See you there. Thank you, Carol. I'm looking forward to the party on the 31st. It should be great. Um, got some other dates there. So last week, I think it was last week, we gave out some cards. Um, who you are praying for to rem you to write three people. We're committed to pray for each to pray for three people. So if you didn't get one last week, come and speak to me or Andrew. We can get you one. And if you did get one last week or the week before, whenever it was, just remember put those names down and pray for for the people you've committed to pray for. Light party we've spoken about. Passion for life. There'll be more details on that. Tots Plus evening, so that's an evening for uh, the carers, the mums, dads, um, K 
carers who take their kids along on a, on a Thursday. Speak to Carol um, about that one. And then we've got Christmas card distribution. I'm hoping to give Christmas cards to... Oh, is that the wrong date? Might, might. Might, the date might change, but we're committed to delivering Christmas cards uh, with details of the Living Church to all the houses in Wallyford. There's obviously a lot of new houses have gone up. They might not know about it, us, so it's a great opportunity. I think there's another page, is there? And then our Christmas programme, I won't go into too many details, but make sure you've got, got all the dates. What's, we've got lots happening, lots of things that we can invite people to. And then, yeah, and looking into January, we have, we're going to do another um, course, not exactly sure which one. Um, so that's great and one to be praying for at the moment. Um, there's a prayer group for future care ministries um, happening. And also we've now, update from last week, we've now got a date for our church, Cayley. Um, it is now the 20, it's going to be the 28th of January. Um, so and that's raising funds for our Blaze summer camps. Is that right? Spring. Spring maybe. Maybe even spring camps. But it's raising money for our camps. Um, so that everybody can go to that um, who can. Okay, rattle goes. Um, that is time for our children, boys and girls, up, up to end of primary to go to their room. Thank you. And there is, of course, prayer meeting, I think, this week on Tuesday. <laughs> Is it the last Tuesday of the month? This week. It is, I've just said that. Is that yeah. Okay, let's continue our service in prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that you don't change. Help us to remember that and that you alone and are, are to be our rock and our salvation like we have sung about this morning. We know you keep your promises, so help us to, to trust you and trust in your promises. We've thought about your grace and love and we compare that to our hearts, to our behaviour, our thoughts, our actions, the things we should do but don't, the things we shouldn't do but do the way we ignore you and love other things far too much. We are so undeserving, which makes your grace and forgiveness even more incredible. So we come before you this morning and we ask for forgiveness. And we're going to spend a bit of time individually in quietness, confessing our sins before you. Lord, thank you that you do forgive us. Thank you that we're able to meet together. Thank you, pray for this service. Thank you for everybody that's here this morning. Pray that you'd work in our hearts. Um, pray for Andrew as he comes up and speaks to us. Pray for the, uh, the Sparks and Ignite leaders as they uh, teach our children about you. What a blessing that is, and we are thankful for the work that goes on. We know that there are people struggling with, um, with illness, um, with different issues in their life. Um, so yeah, we just lift them up to you. Help them in their time of need. Comfort them. Pray that they'd look up to you and gain comfort from the love that you have for them and what you've done. We pray for Wallyford. We thank you for this town, this growing town of, um, uh, of people from all different backgrounds now. Help us to reach them, um, to reach the people here, to help the people to serve. Um, so help us to do that effectively. And likewise for the wider region of East Lothian. 
Um, we pray for all the different towns that are represented here um, and just ask that we can be a shining light in these places. We pray for our country that just seems to be one thing after the other and um, that we read about um, in the news or see in the news. Um, Lord, we just pray for stability, um, just guide our leaders, um, help them to make good decisions. Um, yeah, and just, um, yeah, we ask that um, you would be part of the equation when the, when decisions are made, that they would see that your way is, is, is the best way. And we pray that for our country, but also throughout the world. Pray for our missionaries that we support. Um, we thank you that our kids have been uh, learning about those and be passionate about those. Help that we would be passionate in prayer for our missionaries. We pray for the Flanagans in Papua New Guinea. Pray for the Macintoshes who are at home at the moment, but um, just pray for them and their next working out what's, what's next and the, the work that they're still doing. And also for the street work, um, the Mephi street work in Mexico. They're great work and I just bless, bless that work at this time. So yeah, just thank you once again for this morning and uh, bless the rest of our time together. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing one more song before Andrew comes up and that's Cornerstone. <laughs>
Just as I'm about to speak, my computer decides to switch itself off. We're back online again. Um, thank you so much for everybody who's doing so many things behind the scenes, by the way. It just really helps us just as we uh, meet together, just to be able to focus, doesn't it? Because otherwise it's just distraction, 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 but it's really good to be able to be together. Welcome if you are visiting with us, especially. I'm Andrew, I am uh, the pastor here at the Livingham Church, and we are in the Book of Acts. We're coming towards the end of the Book of Acts, and if anything, what we've begun to discover towards the end of this book is that it is kind of re- repetitive things happening over and over again in fact we've been seeing churches being planted paul goes here paul goes there paul meets some people paul gets some opposition it's like goodness is anything else going to happen in this book and what we've begun to realize is that paul's work is our work we're actually meant to learn from this to see the types of things that we need to be up to as well the priorities as a church that we need to have as we see the different churches in the different cities being planted um from chapter 18 onwards we began to use Um, the word the expression a little bit bitty i'm going to add another word into that and it's messy into what we're doing Um, luke has carefully selected little bits and pieces of information i mean i'm sure he could have written screeds of stuff that would have been really interesting to know but he's carefully selected some historical information under the guidance of the holy spirit of course to give us this rundown in how the church starts and when i say the church not just one little place in one city but actually god's church all across the the known world as it was at the time and as we move on we're going to see the the third missionary journey begin it's not going to have quite the same fanfare as the first two missionary journeys started but we're seeing some patterns aren't we we're seeing some priorities hopefully as a church aren't we as well and the last time i really wanted i'm going to say this again i want to make it clear this is our work too not just a historical piece of information about how the church started because we need to be explaining what we believe reasoning about what we believe proving what we believe persuading people that what we believe is true as well and i pray that as we examine our passage today uh, you'll be invigorated now uh, just <laughs> i wrote this a couple of weeks ago it's it's something that um john t wanted us to um to be able to get into the practice of just in case somebody was sick so that we would always have a sermon in hand um, in case we needed to um, pull somebody because of COVID or you know anything else that could happen and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago and let me tell you this has really informed what we're looking at today Um, it was a conversation that somebody in our church had with somebody in our Wallyford community and in this Wallyford community Um, Some people, especially this person, but apparently she represents a lot of other people, um, who believe that all I do is tout for business everywhere I go in the Wallyford community. Um, Especially at funerals, apparently, as well. Now, apart from the crass words that that expression is, which sounds like I'm some kind of a pyramid salesperson, actually, that person is absolutely right absolutely right um churches don't grow by shutting up about jesus do they they don't grow by doing nothing they don't grow by being nice people or complaining about other people's churches and forgetting the god-given task that we have to grow closer to god first and foremost by the way but also then to share with other people We don't grow by ignoring the Bible, having tiny five minute, 10 minute talks, ignoring the opportunities that God gives us. We grow by staying close to God, first and foremost, and then loving people enough to speak to them, to pray, to obey, and to tout for business for Jesus. So with that in mind, we're gonna watch Paul and the team, of course, and the church grow in a culture which actually wasn't too dissimilar from our own right now. A culture that knew little about Jesus and cared little about Jesus. So we're gonna see the mess, we're gonna see the graft, and we're also gonna see the power. Let's pray just as we get started. Lord, 
I just want to thank you for this book of Acts. Lord, it's a book of the Bible that, Lord, I, I have to say I avoided. I just thought, oh, why would we teach through the book of Acts? It's just so obvious. And yet, Lord, you have been teaching us and you've been prompting us and pushing us and reminding us, Lord, about what we are as a church and how we are to be invigorated. And so, Lord, we pray that as we look at these verses, guide us, teach us, motivate us to obey you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, let's read our first section, which is all about the mess. We're going to go back over some verses that we saw last week. Um, So let's look at our first set of verses when the computer decides to work. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Starting in verse 22 and verse in chapter 18, we have already looked at these a little bit last time, a couple of weeks ago. When he, that's Paul, landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church, then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from one place to the next through the region of Galatian, Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. This is the beginning of the third missionary journey. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, which is of course um, northern Africa, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures, He had been instructing in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him, and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. Caia, remember, is where Corinth is. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was Jesus. And then moving on into chapter 19. And it happened that while Paul, Apollos was at Corinth, in Achaia of course, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. Remember, he's been down down in Galatia. There he found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about 12 men in all. Now that is a bit of a mess in the early church because Paul hasn't been to Ephesus yet. And yet the gospel has been arriving ahead, hearing all about what um, John had been doing. Apollos has been in Ephesus. He's now gone to Corinth, but even he knows about Jesus, and yet not everybody does. Do you remember how at the beginning of um, maybe 1 Corinthians, you might remember, Paul planted, Apollos watered. Um, So this is an amazing work. But when we arrive in Ephesus, we meet some disciples. Um, Now, were they Christians? If you remember the verses about Apollos, previous to these verses, you'll remember there's no mention of Apollos' conversion. It seems that he already knows about Jesus. He's already a Christian, and he spoke and taught accurately concerning Jesus. But Priscilla and Aquila wisely and privately help him to understand more accurately. And we can only guess what that was. We're not told what that was, but what we do know is it's different from these people in Ephesus, these other disciples in Ephesus, because they don't know about Jesus, but Apollos did. It may be that he needed to understand more about baptism, about baptizing in the name of Jesus now, possibly. Um, But certainly these people in Ephesus, these other disciples, don't know about Jesus yet. Apollos knew, but um, when John the Baptist had baptized people, you'll remember but he said, the one coming after me, um, I'm, not, I'm not worthy to untie his, the shoes of his sandals, or the, 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 on his sandals. But actually, he will baptise with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So these disciples aren't even that good a disciple because they don't even know about the one who's meant to come afterwards. 
So there's no mention of Paul as being baptized in the name of Jesus. There's no mention of laying on of hands and receiving the Holy Spirit, just a more accurate. So we can assume that, yes, he is a Christian. Apollos is a Christian. But these folks here um, in Ephesus, these other disciples, aren't. And when we get to Ephesus, from the first encounter, Paul seems to think, well, they are. Because they seem to be acting like they do know all about John the Baptist. And surely they know all about other things that have been happening too. And you can see the two questions that he uses in order to find out more about what they know already. One question is connecting the Holy Spirit with faith. And the other question is connecting the Holy Spirit with baptism. Paul's assumption shows that he expects that these people who know about John will have known about what John stood for. He was just a preparation. But um, they would not have realised that John's prophetic words about the one who was to come after him had come. And he wanted to make sure that they knew about that. Paul's assumption is that these people, if they were truly followers of Jesus, will not only have the Holy Spirit, but will have been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus too, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, if they'd been good students, they would have known about the one coming after to baptise with the Holy Spirit. So either they weren't good students, or they didn't know that the Holy Spirit had already come. So what does Paul do? But Paul teaches them that what John was pointing forward to had come pointing to Jesus. And so he had to tell them about Jesus because they hadn't heard. They weren't Christians yet. However well prepared they felt that they were as disciples. And so their belief is marked with baptism and they have that manifestation of the Holy Spirit that has marked key transitions in this book. The beginning of this third missionary journey um, and new, new fields of mission. Um, when these have happened. And so for these disciples who are now Christian disciples, the experience that Paul asks them about to see if their conversion is genuine, we have this expectation that with true conversion and proper Christian baptism, there is a receiving of the Holy Spirit altogether. And so if you know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then you have the Holy Spirit too. If you've been baptised in the name of Jesus, believing in Jesus as your Lord and your Saviour, you have the Holy Spirit. Faith, baptism, Holy Spirit. What does this teach us? I think it's really obvious that the early Christian church needs taught. It's messy. Some people know some stuff. They're sharing some of the stuff that they know. But they need more theology, if I can use that term, and that doesn't scare people off. They need more teaching. They need more knowledge about God. Some people were teaching um, only some of the truth. And here at the living room, it's just one of our things. We're committed to teaching the full counsel of God, which is why we keep on changing genre and what kind of Bible and book that we're going to study to help us to know the Bible's not just the New Testament. It's not just the Gospels. It's not just the letters. It's everything pointing to Jesus, the full counsel of God and his salvation. Although it might take us a while to teach the full counsel of God if we hang around this long. Our first DNA DNA title in our church for No Connect Tell is that we want to know God more by studying the whole Bible, submitting to its authority. God was still writing this story. And if you've come here from another church, well, maybe one that wasn't, that didn't place a a talk, a a sermon as a high priority in the church, then you'll be finding that studying the Bible is what we believe is how we grow closer to God and allowing him by his spirit to really move in our hearts through what we learn and our love of God, our saviour, to allow God, the Holy Spirit, to fill us and continue to guide us into more truth and more joy in our relationship with God and then more obedience. Messy, but needing teaching. Let's read on. Let's find out about the graft. And he entered the synagogue and for about three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. 
But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he withdrew from them and took the disciples with them, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus, which obviously Tyrannosaurus, which we know is uh, the the really dangerous um, dinosaur. And so obviously tells us something about this man called Tyrannus. He must have been a bit of a tyrant. This continued for two years. So that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Can we put, have you got the map there? Can you go back to the map? (coughs) Because you can see Asia. I always thought Asia was the whole of Turkey, Asia Minor. But actually Asia is just a region. You can see it over there where Ephesus is, where the the arrow is pointing into. You can begin to see where these things are happening. It's amazing. Um, And now if you can just flick our, our, our verses back up again. Thanks so much, Vanessa. We're going to see Paul's weekly graft for the first three months that then turns into a daily graft. When the inevitable Jewish opposition continues, they go somewhere else. They find another hall to be able to do this in. A daily graft. And we have those words that we saw in Thessalonica repeated here. Reasoning. Persuading. And Paul then reasons daily in the hall of Tyrannus. Or Tyrannus. We hear about three months of Sabbath day teaching, but two years of daily teaching. And actually there's some texts that say that it happened during what would have been the normal working recess of the day, almost like a siesta in the culture. And he may have been teaching up to five hours a day. Now, Adji could do that. I couldn't. <laughs> and Adji would only be getting started at five hours. Paul is a really well-prepared Pharisee. He's been memorizing scripture. He has been an amazingly disciplined person in his early life. And this new outreach to the Gentiles, there's nobody better that could have done something as absolutely incredible as poring over the very books of the Bible that he would have been memorizing from a young boy. I've been able to show how they pointed to Jesus. It's astounding. And what's the central message of his daily teaching? Do you see how it's encapsulated there in the words, kingdom of God? And that should remind us that Jesus is the king. He's the anointed king, the chosen king. He's the Lord of lords, the king of kings. Because all kingdoms have a king. They need a king, don't they? Otherwise, it's not a kingdom. Saying the kingdom of God is like saying Jesus is the Christ, the Lord, the King of the kingdom of God. Reasoning from the scriptures as usual, no doubt. Persuading that Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecies and predictions. Now, if nobody turned up, I'm sure he would have given up after a month. So you can imagine, people wanted to hear. And they did hear, and they came, and they listened. And then they went and told other people, oh, you want to hear this guy? He he says he was a Jew, but actually he's now from the way, the Christians. And he's now teaching people and people are maybe maybe heading through Ephesus and then all the way back to where they come from because Ephesus would have been a hub, of course, a hub of industry. And we'll find out more about why Ephesus was such a hub uh, next time we're in the book in a couple of weeks. But isn't it amazing that the gospel spreads and in the face of stubbornness, the people trying to bring them down, there is this, this determination, there's this graft, not giving up. And the whole province hears, Jews and Greeks. That's really exciting. This is the normal position, the normal situation for Paul and his team. Horrible things said about him. And no doubt people said Paul was touting for business, as we might be described as touting for business. But after clear and reasoned proclamation, Jesus is Lord. And two years of consistent teaching, everyone has heard in the area. That's incredible. Now, there's a lot of work to do here, isn't there, East Lothian? Especially even still in Wallyford alone, never mind where maybe you've travelled in from as well and, and the times that we want to pray for you as well in. Somebody just in our Wednesday morning was just so concerned, thinking, how are we going to reach these people? What are we going to do? Well, when we're touting for business, let's make sure that Jesus is exalted. Not us, not our church, but that Jesus is exalted. And although we'll have our critics, imagine a graft 
That means that everybody who lives near us, all our neighbours, know who we stand for. And what do we do when we're grafting? Well, a couple of weeks ago, we were just sharing about, in our home groups, about our desire, our stirring desire to share Jesus. But let's start with prayer, shall we? I think throughout this whole book of, of, of Acts, I don't think I've been highlighting the importance of the time that the, the disciples spent in prayer just in order to see these things happen. Let's let him guide us and inspire us, burden us, help us plan to implement things that are going to reach people. And we can start, of course, this Tuesday evening, because just in case you missed it, it is our whole church prayer this week. Let's read our last verses as we finish up. The power. <clears throat> and God was doing extraordinary miracles. Now, miracles, miracles are extraordinary in and of itself. But these ones were even more extraordinary by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick. And their diseases left them. And the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognise, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit um, was the evil spirit, leapt on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded, and no doubt utterly embarrassed. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also, many of those who were now believers came, confessing and divulging their practices, and a number of those who practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and it came, found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. What incredible power. Who was doing the miracles? That would be a comprehension question for you. Paul, not Paul, God. God's doing the extraordinary miracles. Using people, of course, but miracles so incredible that Luke has to use the word extraordinary miracles. He doesn't use that anywhere else. Um, there were usual miracles, of course, like healing the sick. But even without Paul being present, this is quite something. Something that's just touched his skin. That's something amazing. And Paul refers to miracles that were performed through him in a very special way. And I want to go to two other passages to show these extraordinary miracles and what they, what they meant to Paul. Let's have a look at these next verses. 2 Corinthians. For I was not at all inferior to these super apostles, even though I am nothing. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. It's a sign of his apostleship. Romans 15 verse um, Verses 17 to 19. In Christ Jesus then, I have reason to be proud of my works for God. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. As far as Paul's concerned, the only reason he could do his ministry was because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit to do it, which showed that he was actually sent by God in the first place. So that from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ, is what Paul says, without wanting to comment on some folks across the pond who sell handkerchiefs to people on the God Channel, for example. Since there's no mention of this being done again, I believe it is safe to assume that this phenomenon has never happened again and was very particular to Paul, who's a pri primarily to confirm Paul's status as an apostle. And this phenomenon wasn't just about healing diseases, but demon possession too. So the name of Jesus is known across the region. And these healings were getting people's attention even more, even more. But if you can remember all the way back to the first missionary journey, whenever they were in Crete, remember, or Cyprus, sorry, um, that there was a, 
uh, a person called Bar Jesus. And so Paul had to distance them from the magic there. You remember when they went to Philippi on the second missionary journey, and remember that they found this little girl who could tell the future. They had to distance themselves from black magic arts. Well, here we see something happening in this third missionary journey as well, that Paul needs to distance himself from too. And we'll find that, of course, some other people wanted to get in on the action, probably for fame. They don't want to lose out. Here's this guy Paul doing it. Well, we're going to join in all of this stuff. And you can see that their humiliation is almost comical. (coughs) Comical. Who are you? That's such an interesting question, isn't it? Because they know about Jesus, but they're not Christians. They're not covered by the power of Jesus and his blood or his forgiveness. And so what happens when the power of God is shown? All this false stuff, all this evil stuff is exposed. We find Christians who've been involved in black magic now confessing their past practices. I love to see this. Burning their, sp- their books of spells. And that should prompt us to think about what we have in our houses that are from false religions. If we follow Jesus, there's no room for anything else. These believers show this to us. And the people here in Ephesus get rid of these black magic things um, out of the fear of the true and the living God. That's why um, they don't box the things up and send them off to a charity shop. They want nobody to be able to see these things or use these things again or be deceived by them. They are genuine Christians. And the last verse, of course, is just another one of those markers and acts before we move on. Every time we've seen this kind of verse, it's like the end of an epoch in Acts. So verse 20 um, isn't up there. Verse 20 is not there. He's got their Bible open in front of them. Francis, read verse 20 for us. So the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. The word of the Lord increase, prevail mightily. I can't believe I don't have that verse up. I'm so sorry. What, what, is it, what does it mean by so? So the word of the Lord. Um, What caused the word of God to increase mightily and to prevail? It's the commitment to teach accurately so that people would know God in his ways, submit to him, be baptized, receive God, the helper, the Holy Spirit. It's the hard graft of teaching, connecting with others, telling others. And it's the mighty power of God at work in us. We need to address the obvious. Some of us have loads of opportunities to speak to people. And maybe you or I feel that we're not the kind of people who are good at that. Or maybe you or I feel like we're the kind of people who can't help but open our mouths and speak to somebody. Maybe you're a good listener. Maybe you're good at asking questions. Maybe some of us don't have the time or the energy that we used to. We've demanding jobs, demanding family responsibilities, children who desperately want time with their parents. Maybe we have very willing hearts, but failing health. Do you know what? We can still work together and we need one another because we all must be praying. And that's been such a key driver in this book, which I think I've neglected. You might not be able to help Tots Plus, but you can pray. You might not be able to help at Hope Explored or Christianity Explored, but you can pray. You might not be able to fly your doors, but you can pray. We can work together because we're a body. And we're going to look next year at 1 Corinthians about being a body. Where we don't have special people and people that we don't, don't really care about. We're a body that works together. A team that works together. And it's going to be messy. And it's going to need graft. But we can see the power of God at work as the word of God continues to increase and prevail Because people are becoming Christians and being baptised. And we invest our ability to articulate the good news of Jesus so we can ensure that this church will grow where others have lost confidence in the word of God or forgotten who God is. Let's pray for our sisters and our brothers here in Wallyford, not of this church, in Musselboro, in Preston Pans, in Haddington, in Port Seton, in Ormiston, in Pink Caitlin, even all the way out to Monks Muir. Let's not tout 
because tout is an annoying word. It's, one, it's a word that actually, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means that you're being deliberately annoying. Let's not do it in an annoying way, but let's be consistent. Let's be persistent. Let's be prepared. Let's be reasonable. Let's be bold. Let's be gentle. Let's be wise in the word work. And all for the glory of Jesus, shall we? Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you once again for Lord, verses that I've read over and over through the years. And yet, Lord, it's amazing to see just this incredible, amazing work. Lord, where the word is accurately preached, more accurately preached. Lord, we have an opportunity to learn about you, but Lord, how we understand that it still needs to penetrate our hearts. We don't want to be the living room knowledgeable church. We want to be the living room passionate church because of what we know about you. We want to be a church of experience where people experience you because we know you. And so, Lord, we just want to pray that you will use us. We're your servants. Fill us with your spirit and your word to send us out, Lord. Use us this week. And we pray that you will accomplish amazing things. Amazing things through you working. And we, through us, your humble servants. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for these amazing words. And we just pray that you will continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I think we all, when you listen to a sermon, people take different things away. But I think for me, there was just the challenge of the, of the power of God and how um, sometimes we can doubt that, even though we read about it um, in the Bible so clearly. But sometimes we forget that God can work in such powerful ways um, and does work in such powerful ways um, amongst us. So that's just, for me, it was a, a, a challenge to, to trust that and to, to, to pray as Andrew has challenged us to do. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm sure you've got lots t- that you've taken from that, so it would be good to we'll, we'll probably look at it a bit on Tuesday as well for those who can make it out, um, and Wednesday morning. Um, so, but let's finish our service um, with the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. i
Thank you for your endless mercy. We pray that as a token of our thanks that we would live our lives accordingly and just carry out some of the things that we've been thinking about today. It may be, me it may be messy at times, but help us to work hard for your kingdom. Help us to trust in your power. Help us to love you more. Help us to spend time in your word and, pr and to pray. Lord, help us as we go from this building and bless the rest of our time together this morning. Amen. Amen. Teas and coffees as usual in the living room building, 100 or so yards up the road. Thank you.